Hello and welcome back to the Suzu studio here at the Men's Roller Derby World Cup 2016 live from Calgary, Canada. I'm Panda. I'm Bob Natchez. Okay, so we're going to be hitting track one very soon, but we're going to give you a quick update on track two. We just saw Italy and Argentina play. Um, Argentina took the win 129 to 52. Bob, you were across there. Yeah, Argentina uh, physically dominant. Uh, uh, offensively much be looked much better than their previous game. Awesome. Uh, the team that we're, teams that we're going to see on track number one now is USA and Nijapan. Uh, couldn't be more further apart in the rankings. Seed one versus seed 15 from 2015, uh, 2014. So we are going to go straight across the track one now and let those guys get started. And here we are now on the Nerd Roller Skates track, ready for game 23, can you believe, of the day? 23, that's an amazing number. Where we will see USA versus Japan. Uh, for those at home who don't know, I am Sven. And I am Piggy Fatness, and boy, what a day it's been, Sven. I can't believe we've had 23 games so far, <laughs> although it kind of feels like it. We're not quite at the thousand yard stair yet, but uh, I'm sure by the end of this game we will be. And we get to bring it all back tomorrow for day two. But right now we've got some unfinished business here on this track with, as you said, the United States taking on Japan. Yeah, Japan, of course, with the darlings of um, MRDWC in 2014 came out, started the tournament back then. They didn't really have any tactics or uh, awareness of the gameplay. And then by the end of the tournament, they improved. And from what I've seen so far, they've stepped that up in the two years since. And so I think we're going to get see some really high-end uh, roller derby from Japan. Indeed, each of these teams, this being their second bout of group play, a 30-minute game for group seedings. And so here we go. So starting lineup jam at four, Japan is Harakiri, who's already picked up a high block penalty to so immediately into a power jam for Stang from Team USA. That power jam brought to you by Roller Derby Athletics. Pack moving at a brisk pace. McAfee in to break, some pa break that pack apart and open up some space for B-Stang to get through. Out of play call on Magnum. We'll see him sit. Stang with another quick pass all the way around to get another five points quickly on the board. Three wall now forming by Japan to try to slow Stang down, but in to get some help is one of the USA blockers, Tony Muse. Stang now picks up the high block penalty, just trying to get round that Japan wall at the front. And as we get that, we get Harakiri comes back to track now. So penalty uh, causes the power jam swap out. So another roller derby athletics power jam as Tony Muse goes to sit now for Team USA, picking up the out of play call out the front of the pack. Kyle Divers anchoring that bridge back against Harakiri. But in to help out now are the Japan blockers. Honey Badger just trying to lead that inside sweep. Just trying to make some room for Harakiri to get through. Blockers for the US so quick to recover and form walls. And a forearm penalty sends the USA blocker to the penalty box. That would be g -Bots. Track cut now also on staying. Second power jam opportunity for Japan as we get a roller derby athletics power jam as that jam comes to a close. So at the end of that, USA picked up 14 points. Japan, unfortunately, even with a power jam and probably 10 seconds of the second power jam, unable to get Harakiri through the pack to complete his initial pass. But already, Sven, as you were saying, we are seeing some strategic moves here by Japan, showing a lot of improvement over the past two years. And I think that's really going to be the story of their trip here for this World Cup is just how far they've come. I mean, fielding a full roster this time. Yeah, that's going to be a big uh, step in because by the end of uh, MRDC, M MRDWC 2014, they were all very tired. And we've got one of the stars of MRDWC uh, 14, uh, U2 is jamming for Japan now. And he is through for lead jammer. The crowd noise tells you what just happened as 
Japan has picked up lead jammer and engagement now with Stang. Stang, great move there, just knocks you two off the off the track. And then now recycling is gonna take them all the way back. So there's half a track. Going back to three quarters of a track now, recycling and bringing him back in to catch him in the pack. Quadzilla, as soon as you two step back, the track is there to meet him with a hip and push him off at turn one. You two being drawn back yet again. Now we've got a force to the infield. Beast Tang sent by a nice block by Japan. That was Mayugi Bondai there with a the hip, knocking Stang to the inside. Three wall by Japan settles in as a track cut penalty is going to send one of the Jap Japan blockers to the box. It's Mayugi Bondai who we just mentioned to go. He was doing some great work there, bolstering at the front before that cut. Stang with a little apex leap for the five point pass for USA. Mercy Control anchoring the bridge back for the Team USA as they continue to do a number on U2. Now whatever happens at the end of the jam, Japan will have put some points on the board here because every time U2 is in this pack at the moment, even when he gets bounced off track and recycled back, he is passing players. And Quadzilla picks up the multiplayer, so we're going to probably see some points go 29 total points now for Team USA as we are just about done with the first five minutes of this game. I, of course, yes, as pointed out to me, U2 was recycled back into the pack after he got lead. Here's a quick opportunity to say thank you to Bruce Skate News, the original over the shoulder roller skate holder. Check him out online at bruisedsn.com. So back to Harakiri, jamming for Japan. And that is... It looks like Smith jamming for USA. That is indeed Brandon Smith picking up lead jammer for Team USA. As a Texas boy, I'm glad, to, I'm, I'm always happy to see Brandon Smith out there doing some work, putting up five for Team USA as he's a member of Texas Men's Roller Derby. But right now, he's a member of Team USA. Nice spin move through the pack to free himself. One skater to beat, and he is through, picking up another four points for Team USA. Some great footwork and agility there, just to hold his balance. A few times, it looked like he was going to fall. And all it was is a quick touch to the floor, kept his balance, kept his momentum. And that's what you need when you want to power through as a jammer. He's got the opportunity to do that with that so the solid blocking that's being done by Team USA. He doesn't have to worry about anything else going on other than moving forward and playing his game. He's got some great support out there with Quadzilla and company doing some hard work. Again, another spin move to the outside just to get around that last Japan three wall. Tony Muse moving forward quickly to set himself alongside Quadzilla, McAfee. Trying to slow down the play of Harakiri. Stretching out right at the front of the pack now. Quadzilla goes up to join. That two wall combination of Quadzilla and Tony Muse doing a number on Harakiri. As we've been here throughout today, we've had so many vendors and merchants and sponsors and I want to say thank you to Wico Skates. Greetings from Finland, your feet called, they need a hug. Best regards, Wico Skates. Looks like he tries to go for a quick star pass, Kabukimono. Um, tries to go for the star pass but gets knocked off track. Looks like he's going to try and get the, pack, uh, the star to Mayugi Bondai who's now in there trying to break up that tri wall. In the meantime, Austin with an apex jump to pick up five quick points for Team USA. Looks like Mayugi Born Die now has the star. He's, so the star pass was completed. He tried to do a, an athletic apex jump, ended up being rolled back behind the pivot line. And a track cut now 
being called on Team USA's Austin. So this will be an opportunity for Roller Derby Athletics Power Jam for Team Japan. And we will be going the full natural conclusion of this jam now. So, so Mayugi Bondai has got the single minute remaining to try and push through. Of course, it'll be about 25 seconds of that will be in a power jam. Mayugi Bondai working hard. Has some space on the outside, but Percy Control is there with Binkley ready to close it down. Bots for the USA picks up the forearm, reducing the defenders on track now. Trying to execute that penalty kill. Austin is back though. Power jam ends. Straight through the pack. Japan just lining up there, trying to get a, a set piece into play to get Mayugi Bon die through. Austin just takes a whip off Binkley just to pull himself around. Mayugi Bon die able to clear, making his initial pass. Now a little bit of a cat and mouse here with Austin. Eight seconds left, it's, can Mayuki Bondai get into the pack to score one point? Unfortunately, he cannot. Jam comes to a close and we have a team timeout. Team USA at the 20 minute, 34 second mark. The clock will continue. This timeout is brought to you by Quad Roller Skate Shop, who are sponsoring our team timeouts and official reviews for this tournament. So, 10 minutes of play gone. USA, now I'm going to say this USA only 70 against Japan. We've seen much higher scores already in the tournament at this point. So, I think you can really see that Japan are, are trying hard now and it's they're trying hard to, to stop the USA um, scoring points where the failing is just getting the concerted effort on the offense to get their own jammer through and get in that point scoring situation themselves. Well, as we saw in that replay, you've got these skaters in good position, making good decisions, and it just comes down to the power game and the speed game of the Team USA jammers. So we're going to go back to track now. U2 for Japan against O'Neill. U2 with a quick shoulder and O'Neill just caught him off balance. I think he wasn't expecting that. U2 just rocked to the outside. They were being recycled back a couple of feet by Quadzilla. O'Neill picking up lead jammer for Team USA as we've got a couple of skaters from each team reporting to the penalty box. I didn't see exactly which player got it, but there was some out of play action. Uh, some out of play penalties being thrown about in there. We've also got five points now up for O'Neill and Team USA to extend their lead to 75. Team so, Japan working on a star pass at this point to the pivot. Naruto now has the star for Japan in his hand. Just being held up there. Uh, Quadzilla doing some great work holding him. Again, as before, that gives room for O'Neill to work. Four more points on that last pass. Naruto has taken himself off from track. I think Jujin Jury's looking to see if a penalty was called on the jammer. Two blockers for Japan on the front side of the pack. O'Neill moves to his right and makes that pass on the outside for five. Just trying to see what's going on here. We've got Judge and Jury seems to be in toward the penalty box, but it looks like the penalty for Naruto is standing, it's not being rescinded. Those last five points taking Team USA to 99 points with another pass there by O'Neill, positioning himself with two blockers to beat and makes the pass to cross the sentry mark here at the 17 and a half minute mark, roughly. Yeah, it just looked like that a bit of confusion there was because Naruto went to the penalty box with a pivot stripe and his, his helmet, but the jammer apparently in his hand, and I think he sat, he was sitting in a blocker chair, so judge and jury was making sure he was sitting in the jammer chair. 
17 minutes, six seconds. The clock is moving. 30 minutes of gameplay here as day one here at the Men's Roller Derby World Cup winds down in what has been, what was it? 23 games, is that what you said? Game 23 oh, yeah. is what we are on now. Game 24 of today, which is the last game of the day, will be starting soon, which is Sweden versus Chile over on the Sisu uh, track. We are on an official timeout, so I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to Sisu Mouthguards. If you're not yet, if you've not yet discovered the awesomeness that is Sisu, you must invest in one. These ultra-thin, super strong mouth guards allow you to talk, breathe, and drink. And of course, they look great in photos. So get yours at the Nerd, Ro Nerd Roller Skates booth while you're here, or check out Sisu online. So Sven, here we are approaching the halfway point of what has been, again, all Team USA, but got to give the credit to Japan for some of what we're seeing as they've brought together quite a team here this year. And uh, again, like you mentioned, a lot of progress in two years. Yeah, I mean, considering two years ago, we saw a team very, very immature in roller derby terms. They've obviously gone away from that. They learned from the best at the World Cup. They've gone away. They've spent two years solidly practicing. They've bolstered their roster with extra players. And I think we can see them promising to give us points. And I, I hope we do get to see them put points on the ball by the end of this game. But I'm fearing for the structure of this building when they do put points on the, on, on, on the board. Indeed. I know that I've got an exit plan in place. So gentlemen, just follow me if that happens. All right, back to the track we go. Stang is on the line for Team USA. And he's jamming against Pork Chop Express, one of my favorite derby names. Pork Chop Express caught behind the three ball by Team USA and Stang picking up the lead jammer call. Percy Control just rolling off the back of Tram's block to Pork Chop Express and, uh, Pork Chop Express and taking him back. They're really utilizing all of that 20 feet of engagement zone to take Pork Chop Express back as far as they can. Maybe a bit too far, Not as we do see a failure to return penalty. That takes one Team USA jammer out of the mix. Yeah, that's Tram as the blocker who got the failure to return. And Percy Control with the forearm for that block on Pork Chop Express. Regardless of score, discipline continues to be important, and we're seeing a little bit of less than that by Team USA here in this jam. Direction of play penalty now, sending Zoro to the penalty box for Team Japan. Top Express still working behind D-Bots and Binkley. Shoulder check sends him down. I think what we need to see Japan do here to up the game is just accept the fact that USA are going to be scoring points on them and then actually move into getting the jammer out, playing offensively. Jam comes to a close. Thirteen minutes, twenty-four seconds remain in this twenty-third game of today's day one. And we'll give a shout out to DerbyShop.nl, the Derby Shop, because roller derby saved your soul, but wrecks all your gear. The Derby Shop is an online as well as brick and mortar shop in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, or online at www.thederbyshop.nl. And is known for the best advice and technical support when it comes to all your Royal Derby gear. And if you ever visit, bring cookies. We're going to be testing three helmets today. This simulates a 10 mile an hour impact or a four foot drop. The S1 Lifer helmet with EPS Fusion Foam did pass the multiple impact test. And we are back. Team Japan taking on Team USA. And right now, as you see the score on your screen, if you're just joining us, shame on you. You've missed a lot of great action from both teams. Blue jerseys are Team USA, Team Japan in white. Piggy Fan is here with Sven. Sven, 
uh, we keep talking about it, but again, seeing a lot of interesting stuff from Japan here, and um, it's, you know, we, we're taught not to be partial when it comes to announcing, but y you can't help but want Japan to put, the, put points up. Yeah, but it, it's, I think it's more, you want to see them rewarded for their efforts. Yes. In the, they're almost there, and I think it's just gonna be that one or two little things that they need to do, which will get them out and will score some points. Three wall on the front side by Team Japan, broken up. Smith has actually been knocked to the outside, but he gets through the in uh, of turn one to pick up a lead. As you can see on your screen, Team USA building a three wall anchored by McAfee. And Smith takes that inside path for another pass. Divers now in on that action to defend. Oh, nice spin move there by Team Japan as the jam comes to a close. Gotta love that enthusiasm by Harakiri as he came off track. So we're going to see Magnum jamming for the USA now against U2 for Japan. U2, One. the Team Japan jammer that came closest earlier to clearing for points. The reactions there of Magnum just to... I think that whistle hadn't even finished echoing and he was <laughs> out for lead. Two pushing forward, trying to get past this Team USA wall that is so formidable. Yeah, Binkley and Bot just holding him up now. So now just Bot and Binkley's being held up at the front by Chuck Breaker, who picks up the high block. Binkley U2. working against you too. Looks like a blocking with the head for you too there, just trying to force his way past, past Binkley and I think tried a bit too hard, put his head into the block. So another roller derby athletic power jam in favor of Team USA. Currently stands at 20 points for Team USA on this jam and looking for more is Magnum. He takes a path on the outside for five and calls it off. Setting up a power start for Team USA in the next jam. Nine minutes on the clock as we get set for our next jam. I think we're going to see the replay here of that amazing start by Magnum. Yes. And you can see there, it was like he took one, si one step to the inside and then he saw that clear open track, three steps, and he had lead. And I think every other player on track, even his teammates, hadn't reacted to the fact that he had got through and got lead. Power start once again for Team USA. And it's O'Neill looking to get through and is able to break up that two-all attempt by Japan. Looks like he's picked up the forearm, so the OPR is trying to signal that in. So we are going to see a power jam once that can get dropped off. So that is the, the forearms penalty now picked up from the outside. Now the jammer cover is on the floor. This is reminiscent of MRDWC in 2014, where Team Japan lost the cover and had some issues retrieving it. O'Neill back on the track for Team USA. Team USA accelerated this into a fast pack. O'Neill getting harangued on the outside by Bob for Japan. Discipline being shown by Japan here as they attempt to get that cover. Three wall has. Japan's jammer trap, but the jam is over. 
Yeah, so this is where we see the low block where he lost that the jammer cover as well. So that was UT went in, low, got the low block, that knocked the cover off. Next jam getting set. B Stang taking on Harakiri. M, uh, M Tram there with a great hit to the outside, stopping Harakiri getting any progress forward on the pack. Stang able to break through for five. Direction of play penalty sends. Mayugi Bon Dai, that is, going to the box. Looks like Harakiri there tried to jump on track, but he was just in front of the hips when he landed. Picks up the cut, so we're going to get a Royal Derby Athletics power jam in favour of Team USA. Probably going to break the 200 point barrier in this jam, I would foresee. Five points gets us ever closer to that Sven as Stang continues his run. And it's that inside line that's wide open as we've got a just a huge amount of blue jerseys holding back Team Japan's blockers. So as we get Harakiri coming back to track now, he's going to be taken as far back as they can get him, bridging out all the way before reforming that brace three. Stang is just giving us a, a master class, a master class, master class in apex jumping here. Three wall by Japan, Bubble trying to anchor that wall, but he gets forced off track. And that's going to bring the Team USA total to on this jam so far to 44 points. So that gets him a 48 point jam. And I, I think I, I know it, the in men's regulation or sanction derby, I think 50 points is the highest recorded. So they're getting close. Yes, they are. Under four and a half minutes to go. Smith once again on the line for Team USA, getting ready to face off against number two, which is Kabuki Mono for Team Japan. See, once again, we're seeing Japan at the front there trying to hold up the jammer, whereas what they should be doing right now is pulling back and getting Kabuki Mono out of the pack and at least putting pressure on the Team USA jammers to, to do something or call it. Chuck Breaker there with a nice little block on Smith that forced him out. He almost took a track cut, but was able to recover nicely. Now it's Honey Badger in on the action as well, sending out Smith and now Japan bridging back. So McCarthy there did a nice little hop across the apex just to roll all the way back to the pivot line. Honey Badger working alongside Chuck Breaker, but Smith able to break through yet again. So that was McAfee that we just mentioned before, picks up the high block, goes to sit in our penalty box. Smith continuing his run, getting some support on the back side of the pack, but on the front side, it's a three wall by Japan, but nice job taking that hit and staying on his skates and following through. Yep, looks like we've got the star pass and it is Naruto, once again, the recipient of that star pass. Still in his grasp, he's gonna try and fight his way past Godzilla. to a close. Yeah, so we've got like, we've played almost 28 minutes of Royal Derby. Japan haven't put a point on the board yet. 
but they're still playing like it's jam one yes and it's zero zero on the board uh the fight in the japanese team is amazing it's the no quit attitude that we saw in the first world cup where even when they were down to five players they didn't want to forfeit the game back to track that we've got magnum up against u2 magnum is already through for lead bit slow on that one it's about five seconds for lead <laughs> A couple of seconds off is normal. We have a... It looks like a star pass to Miyuki Bondai now for Japan. Again, still trying whatever they can to break that zero. And Miyuki Bondai picks up the cut track. So we saw Japan there trying to do, as I've been saying, for them to actually get the jammer out. But unfortunately, in this case, Miyuki Bondai picks up the cutting. Uh, picks up the cutting call and is now going to be another Royal Derby Athletics power jam to Team USA. Which gives us a, a moment as we look forward, you know, talking about group place, Van, the fact that Team USA will now be putting the final touches on their second win. And within the group, Finland still remains as their third bout. And fin Finland has had a good day here today. And yeah, so that they sets were, up a nice bout for tomorrow. They were very strong this morning when I saw them. Yeah, so we're seeing some out-of-play calls. Binkley reporting to the penalty box. For what looks like a pack destruction. Just as we're seeing about the fight in the skaters, um, we have got, we will be doing a quad skate shop team of the tournament, and you at home can have your say in who you think should be on that team of the tournament. So this will be a fantasy lineup of 14 players that will be selected from the best of the best and they will be honoured as the Quad Skate Shop Tournament. And you can go to the Facebook page on Saturday and have your vote. Final jam of this bout underway. That sees number three, Harakiri for Team Japan. And it's O'Neill picking up lead jammer and calling it off. And that will bring an end to the game. 280 points for Team USA as they continue their group play, picking up the second win of the day for Team USA. Their bout earlier today against Scotland ended at 252 for their point total. And so eclipsing that just a bit here in this second bout of their tournament. As much as I would love to see that, z uh, that zero turn into a one or a two for Japan, it just didn't pan out for them in this case. But you just know that after this game, they will go away, they will break down what USA were doing, and they will come back to the next game stronger again. That's what we saw Japan do every game in 2014, and I think we're seeing them do it again here. Every game they will go and learn, and they will pick up new tactics and set pieces, and they will come back stronger. So I'm not going to count them out of anything at the moment. But right now, at this moment, the accolades do go to Team USA, who are taking their victory lap currently here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And uh, what a day it's been, Sven. Well, that is the end of the roller derby on the Nerd Roller Skates track today. Over on the Sisu track, we still have got uh, Sweden versus Chile to finish off. And then we'll be getting some much needed rest, getting ready for our opening games tomorrow, where on the Nerd roller, uh, roller Skates track, you will see Belgium versus France, which will be a bit of a local rivalry. And then we've also got on the Sisu track, first game, Spain versus Wales. So lots more exciting action set to go tomorrow. So make sure you join us for another day of roller derby action here out of Calgary. And uh, Sven, it's been a pleasure. Had a lot of fun on this one with you. I've enjoyed this game as much as it has been a whitewash, if you want to say it, 2800. I think there was a great game there and a lot of actual good derby action that we can enjoy. So let's hope it continues as the rest of the weekend plays out. So I've been Sven. And I'm Piggy Fatness. And we'll see you on the next one.
Hello, welcome back to the CCU studio here at the Men's Roller Derby World Cup 2016 with Pandemonium. Yeah, and Bob Natchez. Okay, so we're going to take a few minutes to talk you through some of the uh, events from today, some of the scores, the wins and losses. Um, we've still got one game underway, which is Sweden and Chile on track two. So coming off of track one, we've just seen USA and Japan playing. A very one-sided. <laughs> Absolutely. No points on the board for Team Japan, unfortunately. Team USA storming ahead in the lead. Uh, so as we stand at the minute, we've got the bracket information, or sorry, the uh, group information on your screen. Uh, as it stands, Team USA ahead in red group. Team England ahead in orange group, Team Canada ahead in green group, and Wizards of Oz ahead in blue group. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, what we're looking at as we take a look at each group is Team USA with, with the, first off, it's based on wins inside of your group, and then it's point differential. Team USA with two wins and the point differentials they have um, are, are gonna lock up either the, the top or the number two spot. Finland's obviously in the second best position right now, but the rest of that group still has games to play, so we will not know until tomorrow. As we take a look at the orange group, um, there's nobody that is locked here. Uh, England sits in the best situation with two, two wins and two games to play. Uh, Argentina right now sits with two games won, one game lost, and uh, their outcome against Sweden will uh, most definitely determine whether or not they advance or whether or not it's going to be one of the other teams in their pool. Uh, Green, we can say Canada has locked up a position uh, with a 3-0 start. Uh, as you take a look at the rest of that particular pool, uh, it's still pretty wide open, Panda, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, absolutely. We, I mean, there's until we move on to Blue Group, at this point, there's quite a jump between the uh, top two in terms of score differential. You've either got triple figures and double figures or triple figures and single figures. Yeah. Looking at blue group, you've got uh, two top teams with score differential, uh, score differential in triple figures. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at Australia first of all, the highest score differential. And and 3-0, they're locked. They're, they're locked into a spot already. And when we say locked in, this means that they will move on to the knockout phase. Uh, they remain in contention for the cup. Uh, but you take a look at France, big score differentials, two wins. Uh, we, we, I, we cannot say that it's mathematically impossible that they will not advance, but they certainly sit in the catbird seat right now. Uh, we can say that the Netherlands has mathematically been eliminated, even if they would win two games tomorrow. Uh, they would have to do it by more points than is than we've probably ever seen. So, uh, <laughs> that but, would be some excellent gameplay right there. Yeah, <laughs> and we can't say that Puerto Rico is unfortunately done as far as having any shot at the knockout phase. All of these teams will still continue to play as they will play for positional seating. 
so that we will have a 1 through 20 uh, ranking of all of the countries by the time we're done with it. Yeah, absolutely. The last game that we'll see on each of the tracks tomorrow um, will be for fourth place in the group. Um, so games 41 and 42 are going to be played for fourth place in each of the groups. Um, you can see on your screen now a little bit of information from the bracket that we've had put together. So some of the scores have been pre-populated on there. If you're at home and you're keeping track of this, um, this is a really handy document. If you're at home, you have a program or whatever, you can fill this in in your program just to get you started. So you can see where we're up to uh, going into gameplay tomorrow. Yeah, and it, as you can see, we've got, it's, it's particularly the teams that have only played twice uh, and the outcomes of their games that will affect their pool play uh, most significantly. And that's really about all we can tell you at this point. But it gives you an idea as to whether or not the team that you're following or the teams that you've been watching are, are still in the hunt or uh, whether or not they may not be or uh, if it's going to be a tough a tough crawl back in, but uh, you, you know, you take a look at at least two or three of these uh, pools and there's wiggle room. Mexico's not done. No. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> we, Mexico been a great story. There'll be one to watch. Uh, even though they're one in two, uh, they have a very low point differential of loss. Yeah. And if they pick up another, if they pick up another good win tomorrow, that could change uh, that could change your future yeah i mean we've seen some incredible gameplay from them they've played so tight at this point and like you say that low point differential throughout all of the games that they have played has put them in really good set at this point moving into tomorrow um so we'll be starting the day with uh belgium france on uh, track one and spain and wales on track two each of the games that we have are staggered by about 15 minutes so track one will be starting on the hour where we can and track two will be starting quarter past the hour where we can um moving into the next couple of days after that saturday and sunday it's going to work around the same until we have the last couple of games of the tournament and that's right N 9 a.m mountain time is the is what the alarm is set for <laughs> <laughs> absolutely for so every day we'll be here getting you ready before that game um, if it is that you're flicking between the tracks and you want to come back to us on track two shortly, we will be recapping this information if you want to catch the end of the game there, which uh, I guess probably is coming up real soon. Um, and it may answer a couple of questions for us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, you can get in touch with us via Twitter at mensrdwc or use the hashtag mrdwc. You can catch up with scores at mrdwc live and you can also check us out on the website which is mrdwc.com and we want to thank you all for being with us today hanging in there we've made it through the first 12 hours and we've got a few more to go absolutely and i hope you're enjoying yourselves as much as we are because we've got an incredible crew being able to bring this to you so i want to say a huge thank you to all the production guys and bob for putting all this together because without you guys we wouldn't be able to do it and you at home helping us to bring this to you um, and, and putting up your dollar for the stream incredible thank you so much for doing that for us and with that, enjoy the rest of your evening, or if you haven't, uh, switch over to track two, and uh, we'll do this all over again for you. <laughs> Good night. Nerd Roller Skates is your dedicated quad roller skate shop in Calgary, Alberta. Being a nerd is about being really excited and really passionate about a really specific thing. And the thing that we are really excited and passionate about is roller skates. Nerd Roller Skates. Official skate shop, Men's Roller Derby World Cup 2016. For people who roll. I am your fortress on the front line of sport. Engineered to be stronger than the attack. I defy convention by protecting more with less. Helping you breathe easier, hydrate faster, speak more clearly. I am Sisu.
and I fend for you. Somebody's going to need an iPhone.